Okay, we're gonna make a couple burgers tonight, and we're gonna use these Omaha steak burgers here. And these are gonna be really good. So, I've already got a couple here, and we're gonna slap them on the grill. The grill's ready to go. Just two burgers here, one for you, one for me, right, Jeremy? Yep. What's nice about these packages is that you can just take the uh, burgers right out of the plastic, slap them on there, and what I think I'll do is add a little bit of uh, Montreal steak seasoning. This is going to be good. And I'm just going to close that down, let it cook for okay, a few minutes. Okay, time to flip these now. And I'm going to put a little bit more of this uh, seasoning on here. Last time I made these, I didn't put the seasoning on, and they were great without it, but I'm going to try to put it on this time, because I know that's good. So. All right. Okay, it's time to put some cheese on now. I'm going to flip these over. And get some aged cheddar on there. Kind of putting a lot on for the size of the burger, but it's going to be good. Yeah, I think they're pretty much cooked, so I'm going to turn the heat down and close this back down just to let the cheese melt. I like to cook those with a hot flame there because they're hamburgers and uh, gets them going really well. All right, I like to toast these buns too, so I'm going to put them on here. And those are almost melted by now, so I'm just going to close that up and. They should be ready. Just it's second. time to take these off. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of small burgers the way they come with Omaha steaks, but they fit right on these buns too, so they're just the right size for these. Okay. And here you have it, the Omaha Steak Burgers, ready to eat. We've got two burgers here, and uh, they are looking good. Let's try this one right here. Mm. That is good. Mm -mm. Hey guys, Ray Cohen's Rec Tech Grills. Wanted to show you a quick steak video with the Rec Tech Mini. Really cool, we got it running at full. Uh, the Rec Tech uh, Mini is running at 576 right now. We got six ribeyes, we just marinated them in a little teriyaki. We're gonna get these on. We're gonna go about eight minutes aside here. I'm sorry, we're probably going about four minutes aside. I don't know why I said that. See you in four minutes. All right, it's been four minutes, so let's flip these bad boys. Let's go about four more minutes, see where we're at. All right, we end up going uh, five minutes on the second side for a nice mid rare. That one's falling apart. Think our tray's big enough? Tray? I think we'll be all right. And there you go, the Rec Tech Mini. Visit RecTechGrills.com to learn more. Thanks for watching. So long as you're starting with high quality beef, cooking a good steak is as easy as throwing it on the grill or searing it in a hot skillet. But if you want perfect steak, and I'm talking steak with a rich, brown, crackling crust and a medium rare core that extends all the way from edge to edge, 
then you need to take your technique to the next level. Now traditional methods like broiling, grilling, or searing in a skillet leave you with one problem. Your steak develops a temperature gradient inside it. So while the very center of the meat might be a perfect medium rare, as you move towards the outer layers it becomes more and more cooked until you reach the edges which have the dry, chewy texture of well done meat. So the question is how do you minimize this overcooking? So here's the thing, the more gently you cook your food, the smaller that temperature gradient inside is going to be. So for instance, if you cook a steak in a 500 degree oven, you're going to develop a pretty thick band of gray meat inside. Cook that same steak in a 250 degree oven and that gray band shrinks significantly. And you may have heard of a concept called sous vide cooking, and the idea here is to take that low temperature cooking to the extreme. With sous vide cooking, you place your steak inside a sealed plastic bag and then put that plastic bag in a water bath held at the exact temperature that you want to serve your steak at, say 130 degrees for medium rare. About 45 minutes later, you take your steak out of that bag and it's perfectly evenly cooked from edge to edge with no temperature gradient and no danger of overcooking. The problem is that sous vide equipment is really expensive, but there's an alternative, a regular old $30 beer cooler. Even though a cooler is designed to keep cool things cool, it's equally good at keeping hot things hot. So all you've got to do is fill it up with hot water, adjust the temperature with boiling water or cold water, and then place your bag meat inside it to cook. So long as you start a few degrees higher in order to compensate for the heat loss when you add your meat, it should be able to maintain its temperature for the 45 minutes required to cook most steaks, pork chops, lamb chops, chicken, or fish. You can cook your meat either in a cryovac style bag or in a regular heavy duty zipper lock bag. In order to get the air out of a zipper lock bag, put your meat inside it, zip it up most of the way, and then slowly lower it into the water, sealing it just as the air is forced out. You've probably noticed one glaring problem. Your steak develops no crust or color. You're gonna have to add this after it comes out of the cooler. Now you can do this on a grill if you wanna cook outside, but my personal favorite way is to finish it in a cast iron skillet. Just heat up some oil over the highest possible heat while you carefully dry the outside of the steak in order to help it brown faster. Season the steak generously with salt and pepper, and once the oil starts smoking, add the steak to the pan along with a couple of pats of butter. Cook the steak just until it's browned on both sides, about a minute or two, and then to finish it off, hold it up vertically with tongs in order to get the edges. The beauty of this method is total flexibility in terms of timing. Once your steak comes up to temperature inside the cooler, you can let it sit there for up to a few hours longer without worrying that it's gonna overcook. Your steak is gonna be hot and ready to sear as soon as you're ready to eat. You wanna up your game even further? Then get yourself one of these guys. By combining the intense heat of a propane torch with a cast iron skillet, you can get a steakhouse quality char in a matter of moments. Just make sure that you shut off your smoke detectors first. It may take a little bit more time, but if you're willing to put in the effort, this is the best quality steak you can get at home. A good steak has to be my favourite thing. There's so much choice and I could have a different one every day. Over the last few months, Eblex have been working hard on their steak range in a bid to show people there's more to it than sirloin, rump and fillet. There's two reasons why the steak bar range is so special. We wanted to address the inconsistency of steaks in the marketplace and that the consumer wants to be buying a product that they can rely on. Secondly, we wanted to try and utilise some of the more underused cuts out of the four quarter meat, trying to put more profitability into the uh, into the meat trade. There looks like there's some great cuts here. Yeah, yeah, there are some really good cuts here. We brought the rump down into three muscles, removing any gristles out of it so it improves the quality. And also, we've even developed some more cuts out of the four quarter where we break them down, giving some really, really good steaks that the customers are going to really enjoy. We've done significant research into these, addressing the different textures and the different eating qualities. Some of the steaks that we've created, the flat iron, for instance, has taken off like you wouldn't believe. Great cut of meat. Yeah, fantastic. Much underutilised cut of meat. So how can business benefit from this range? Both retail and food service can benefit from this range because it offers a greater variety of steaks. Eblex already have marketing material in place to help push the new steak range at all levels of the supply chain. They're convinced that the hard work they've undertaken can really pay off.
Eblex's new State Bar range opens up some new and exciting opportunities to create some fantastic individual dishes. So we've got our picanha steak with triple cooked chips, a modern Bernays sauce with some tarragon, and then we go over to our flat iron steak with char grilled little gem lettuce and hurling tomatoes. And this is special. This is the Denver steak, caramelized onion, and marabone. And now I'm gonna show you how to make it. To start with, I've got some onion, parsley, and of course my Denver steak. And I'm going to use egg, flour, and oatmeal crumb to coat some bone marrow on the side. Okay, this is our quality standard Denver steak. It's one of the more interesting cuts from the chuck. And with our Denver steak, the first step is to wrap it in cling film and then put it into a sous vide bag. So I'm wrapping it in cling film to make sure that we keep a nice shape when we're cooking it through the water bath. Okay, we put our steak into our sous vide bag. Make sure, again, you've got the shape nice and straight because we want that really perfect long steak. Okay, we're popping the Denver steak into the water bath. We're gonna cook that at 60 degrees for 10 minutes, just really nice and gently. That just helps the tenderization and slow cooking process. Okay, we've got our Denver steak. I've just drained off the juices and I've seasoned the steak and then put some clarified butter onto the steak. Remember, there's no fat on the steak. And then pop your Denver steak onto your char grill. And all we're going to do is sear it on either side. We just want to serve that steak beautiful and medium to rare. Now I'm going to move the steak 45 degrees, just one motion, 45 degrees. And then we're going to turn the steak over, and now we're ready to plate up. First of all, we've got to get our caramelised onions with two spoons. This is the tricky bit. Just quenelle, a nice sort of shape. We'll get those, pop them onto our plate like so. Then we've got our croquettes, marabone croquettes. Go on next. And then we've got our Denver steak. So we're just going to pop along the side, just cook beautiful and rare. And just to finish, some roughly picked parsley, which just adds a little bit of bite and colour to our dish at the end. And there you go, we've got a beautiful top quality Denver steak. Piece of meat. Wow, you can actually see it. Hi guys! Yeah, yeah. So, it, the proof is in the pudding, yeah? Okay. Smells good now. Smells good. <laughs>